What's up guys? I'm Justin Voss and welcome to 9 Fabrication Tricks in 9 Minutes. Whether you're a full-time metal fabricator or just doing it as a hobby, hopefully a few of these tricks will help you out along the way. And let's just get started. For the first one, it is how to notch tubing without a tubing notcher. Now the main thing in this is that the piece of tubing that needs notching is the same size as the piece of tubing that you will be joining it into. I like to make a line where my center is gonna be. This is a round piece of tube, so it's not super crucial. And then I'll make a mark on each side of that to give myself about, about 3 eighths of an inch in between the two outer marks. Next, you're gonna take your piece of tubing over to your bandsaw. If you have a chop saw, that will also work. You could do this by hand, but a bandsaw or a chop saw definitely make the task easier. Clamp the tubing down and set your bandsaw or chop saw to 45 degrees. If you're doing this by hand, you're gonna to have to mark off a 45 degree line on each side. Once you have both sides cut off, just clean it up with a grinder and you're done. Trick number two is ball your tungsten using only your welder. Now this one's pretty easy to do and you would most likely be doing this to weld aluminum, uh, especially if it's heavier aluminum at higher amps. You don't want to point this sharp. I'll run a little bit of a point on thinner aluminum, but not this sharp. So if you don't want to grind it, some people prefer a very nice rounded tungsten and a really easy way to do that is by simply switching your welder to DC positive. I just have a small piece of scrap steel here because we just need something to weld against that's not our table. And then all you do is strike an arc against your piece of steel and keep upping the amp until it's rounded off just how you want it. Trick number three is wipe off your filler rod. This one's a no-brainer for me, guys. Wipe off your filler rod. You never know where it's been. I've noticed a lot of times, too, especially steel will be packed in some kind of oil to keep it from rusting. You just never know. Number four is multiple torch heads. Okay, now there's a lot of different types of TIG torches, but some of them have the capability of actually being able to unscrew the head from the torch itself, both the Weldcraft flex head can do that and so can this eye head ball head. They have the same kind of threads on the end of them. I almost think it's worth getting a torch like this just for this reason and that is say you just got done welding aluminum with kind of a high angled head and you need to do some steel welding you can simply pop off that head throw on your favorite steel setup and you're ready to go. I'm including this in the fabrication tricks because you have no idea how many people I've seen that have this kind of setup, but they only have one torch head. So every time they switch over from aluminum to steel or whatever it is, they're taking off all their little parts. And if people are bringing you all different little kind of things to weld, or if that's what something you do a lot, it can save you a ton of time by having just a few different heads set up ready to go for the stuff that you weld the most. Next up at number five is blast tacking with your TIG welder. This one's a good one if you're trying to quickly tack something together and don't have an extra hand. You could call it fuse tacking, blast tacking, but pretty much if you're like this, you got maybe one thing in a vise and then you gotta hold the other piece, and then you have your TIG torch in the other hand, you don't really have an extra hand to be adding filler rod. So for this one, you need to have a nice tight connection. The two pieces need to be touching each other for sure. And then once you strike your arc, just as the two pieces start to melt, you're gonna increase the amps really rapidly. This isn't a slow thing, that's why I call it blast tacking. Now once you have it tacked, you might think you can go ahead and start using rod for the other tacks, but there are advantages to keep fusion tacking it as long as it's working, because then when you go back for your final weld, you don't have that filler rod to go over, which often creates a little bump in your weld. Number six is use a drill bit to deburr a hole. 
Oftentimes on something like aluminum, you don't want to get your grinder out and just brrr, make big, big, big <laughs> and make big grinding marks all the way around your hole. You can just take any drill bit as long as it's bigger than the hole and spin it right around once, once or twice. And it'll take those burrs right off there. Works on any hole as long as your drill bit that you're using to deburr is larger than the hole. Number seven is that you can drill out smaller gas lenses. So say you have a larger piece of tungsten that you need to use, like this one's an eighth inch and all I have is a 3 32nd gas lens and I have a collet but no gas lens to go with it. You can drill out any smaller gas lens to fit a larger piece of tungsten. On gas lenses, the inner diameter of the hole changes depending on what it's for. Like this is a 3 32nd gas lens, so this eighth inch piece of tungsten will not go in here. But the outer diameter is the same on all of them. So this could be a 16th gas lens and it would still work. All you have to do is clamp it down in your vise and then take your drill with whatever size drill bit that's going to match your tungsten and drill it out. And once you have it drilled out, it fits right in there. And this will work just as if it was designed for that size tungsten. Number eight is wipe off a Sharpie mark by drawing back over it. This one's pretty easy. If you're making your marks on your metal, aluminum, steel, it doesn't really matter, and you realize you measured wrong or need to make another mark, instead of going and getting some lacquer thinner or acetone and wiping it off, you can just simply Mark right back over it with your Sharpie and wipe it off with your finger. And for number nine and the final one, 10 snip nail clippers. You definitely heard that right. 10 snips can be used as nail clippers. So if you're working late in the shop, you got dinner plans that night, and uh, you know, your fingernails are long and dirty, you wanna get that taken care of? It's just that easy. And I actually think if you do it right, it's just as safe as using regular tin snips. What you do is you hold them upside down. So normally you would hold like a pair of red snips this direction, but you're gonna flip them upside down. So this way for this hand and this way for this hand. And then you're gonna press your finger against the bottom one and it lets your fingernail overlap it. And then you just go right around it and that's it. I actually think it comes out with a nice smooth cut, better than regular fingernail clippers. So maybe a patented idea there. And that's it, nine fabrication tricks in nine minutes. I hope you found these enjoyable to watch, maybe found a few of them useful. Uh, sorry for all the noise outside, they're literally tearing up the parking lot right outside my door. But besides that, I hope you subscribe and stick around, maybe hit the bell to receive a notification every time a video comes out. Another good way is to follow me on Instagram, I'm at Defiant Metal. I'll often post project photos there as well as put something out every time a new video comes out and I get to see your guys' projects on there. Um, if you found any of these useful or have a favorite one, please let me know down in the comments. But as far as this video goes, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.